what's up? It's your girl, Sadidi. <coughs> I'm finna do a story time that you guys have been asking me to do. You heard that? And it is about why I moved to Atlanta. Pink lemonade with the bomb, babe. Make the booty up, oh, like Beyonce. How can make the dick dance, rockin' like a blast, and you want another chance? But I know we won't last, and your last bitch mad, cause I'm coming up fast. I'm passing bitches up like they're running out of gas. So, I moved to Atlanta in 2012. I graduated high school 2011. I moved to Atlanta in 2012. So, bring it on back. I moved to Arkansas when I was in the ninth grade from California. So, yeah, that was a big culture shock for me. You know, it was real different and everything like that. And so, um... Uh, I just, you know, but I got kind of adjusted to it as the time went by or whatever. And so, when I went to college for a year, it just, college was not for me. I wasn't finna keep wasting money and I didn't really like going to college. Like, I'm sorry, in my eyes, I felt like I, w I was going to school right after school. And I just wasn't, I didn't have like a dream that was like to, well, I did want to do law. Like, I wanted to be a defense lawyer, but... I just kind of lost that. I don't know. Whatever. You, it happens. So, I didn't uh, go to college anymore. I told my mom I didn't want to go to college. So, my mom was obviously upset that I didn't want to go to college or whatever. But she wasn't really trying to force it on me. So, she was like, okay, you can come back. Mind you, coming back was coming back to a town that had like 2,000 people in it. Like, it was just not big or nothing like that. So I was back and I was just so lick, like falling into a depression. Like I used to just be crying. Like I was just like, this is so annoying. Like I hate this. Like it's just too dead. Like I'm not finna do this. Mm -mm. So I told my mom I didn't want to be there anymore. I wasn't happy there anymore. Like I want to move somewhere else. Like I just wasn't going to do it. And so I don't even fly my mom nervous, but I went to, my mom thought I was going to college to get my grades to see if I can get back in for uh my, to do a second year or whatever. But I really went to go pick up my refund check so I can move, period. So, um, because I, I had the grades or whatever, because I went to a, a college that, well, I'm really not dumb, but I also went to a college that wasn't that difficult in my eyes. So, um, I went to go pick up the refund check or whatever. And then I, um had my money and I told my mom I wanted to leave and everything like that so when it comes down for me to leave I take the Greyhound bus and I go to Atlanta so I get to Atlanta it's just my sister there and you know that's it or whatever so the day of my 20th birthday I had met some noobs up there that had kind of saw me on Instagram or whatever, been following me. And then it was like, you live here now? And I was like, yeah. And it was like, well, who you hang out with? And I was like, nobody. So they were like, we going to come pick you up. And my birthday falls on Memorial Day, I believe, that weekend. So they were having like a barbecue and stuff like that. So they took me, I mean, took great care of me. And we really remain friends till now, actually. And, um... Yeah, like, so they took me to the barbecue. Girl, why are they at the barbecue? I was drinking in the car with them and everything like that. And, I mean, when I was drinking in Arkansas, we was drinking, like, Barnett's and shit. You know what I'm saying? Honey, they were having me drinking Hennessy. You know, I ain't never had no liquor that's, like, that good, bitch, before. So, I'm in the car drinking it. They was like, okay, you shouldn't drink that much. My lips look a little dry. Yeah, they were like, you shouldn't drink that much. And I was like, boy, whatever. Like, I'm, it's my birthday. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, I'm still cool. I'm handling, holding my little liquor, whatever. Girl, why when we get to the party, it's hot. Like, I'm feeling it now. I'm like, girl. So, I'm just walking around the party, mixing and mingling, mingling and mixing. And then, next thing I knew, I was getting woke up. <laughs> I was getting woke up like I had fell asleep on the bathroom in the on the counter like and it was like an apartment complex big old like outdoor thing so I fell asleep like in the child so they picked me up and put me in the car and locked me in the car with like the uh, windows down 
So I'm knocked out in the car. So they waking me up like we about to go something to the next spot. And I'm like, the next spot? Boy, I'm I'm trying to check my boy, I'm dead right now. I'm not going nowhere. So they was like, man, don't be like that. And so I was like, oh my God. So I ended up going with them. Mind you, I met somebody there who was like not okay. So it was, I met two guys with the same name at the barbecue. And I wanted to give one of them my phone number. And I told one of them to give it to them because they was like, they asking, where did you go? Because I talked, ended up meeting both of them. So that they asked, where did you go? And I was like, honey, give him my number. Give him my contact. So it ended up getting to the wrong dude. Then I ended up telling him, he texted me. So he was like, hey, this so-and-so. And I was like, okay, cool. He was like, well, where y'all finna go? And I was like, we finna go here. Thinking the other dude finna show up, honey, why the most irritating? He was so irritating. He was so forward. He was just so weird. And he ended up popping up talking about something. What's up? I mean, I'm going to be your date. I was so pissed off. I didn't even really interact with him. Because I'm like, why did you come here? What, what, what? Like, ooh, like. Because he was just so weird. Like, you know I wasn't talking to you. I didn't even give him that vibe that I would give him my number. Like, but anyway, fast forward to that. So, yeah, I get there and everything. And, um, we go to another place and it was fun. And the other boy showed up, but then he ended up leaving or whatever. And then we just still turned up. So, on down the road, I met female friends, like, the weirdest way. Like, this girl just wrote me on Instagram, like, where are you from? And I was like, Arkansas. She was like, do you have friends? And I was like, no. And she was like, well, let's hang out. I'll pick you up, me and my other, me and my best friend. So, I'm like, okay. Girl, come to find out, those became my go-to gals. Like, those was my best friends. Uh, One of them, her name was Sunny. She went to Georgia State. Then the other one, her name was Chanel. She went to Spelman. And it was just like, those was my best friends. Like, we clicked instantly. Every, well, not all of us, but we ended up all clicking. But we did click. It was just, like, perfect. I loved, like, everything, how it happened. And so, we ended up hanging out. Like, it was just so cool. And a lot of people, when they meet me, like, my personality always been like this. I'm really more toned down than what I used to be like. So, a lot of people... When they meet me, like females, I'll just say, when they meet me, they be like, ooh, like, she too much, like, and then they don't like the fact that, okay, I have personality and then I look good, so people like to be around me. Y'all know by now I'm not the type of person to just brag and boost and brag and boost, but I mean, that's really just my tea. Like, I, I'm not hard to look at, and I am also have an entertaining personality, like, you know, I like to do stuff. I'm not somebody like, oh, I'm not going in there, like, no, bitch, what's up, let's go. Like, that's the type of person I am. So, I mean, a lot of people, I'm likable. And so, when I met them and they was, like, super cool with my with my, me, I was like, oh, bitch, what's up? So, we really ended up being best friends, right? So, I'm really getting off of the subject of why I moved to Atlanta because why I moved to Atlanta is just because I was bored where I'm at. I'm just going to talk about my experience there and how I liked it and everything like that. So, yeah, I met them. This is all still 2012. And then I ended up getting a job at the Underground Mall, honey. The ghetto. Ooh, ah, the ghetto. The ghetto. The ghetto. The ghetto. The ghetto. The ghetto. <laughs> that was my first job at a, boot a boutique called Vivi's Boutique. I know they're in a mall and stuff now, but that was my first job. And I got the job because, let me tell y'all something. Y'all need to learn to fight for stuff, okay? I got that job because I hassled that lady. I saw everybody else was like solid no's when I dropped my resume off. No, 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 no. But that lady, she was like, um, I don't know. I mean, I'll let you know. Baby, I went up to that lady every day. And I was like, mm, I don't know why your store is looking really raggedy today. Like, the people that work here now, they ain't folded stuff. Mm, nobody greeted me when I walked in. Like, mm, you might need somebody because that's a mess. And she was just like, oh my God, just where's your driver's license? <laughs> and so I ended up working there. I worked there for a few months. And then my friend, Charnel, ended, me up put, ended up putting me on at her job or whatever, which was being a hostess at a restaurant. And so that was that. I started, it really was just like, I just was building my own life, you know, or whatever. And so then I ended up getting my first car, Hannah. 
She was a Nissan Maxima. Hey, girl, hey. She caught on fire. And then I just, you know, started working at Top Golf. That started off my that started off my waitressing and everything like that. And then that's when stuff got interesting. But anyway, like so overall, like I would say my experience in Atlanta was very pleasant for me. Like a lot of people say, oh, dating, boo, da da da. To me, I feel like a lot of people's dating life goes bad in Atlanta because y'all so trying to talk to niggas that you feel are popping or niggas that are rich niggas and Instagram and 24k and 100k followers and stuff that's really not where the cool niggas at baby it's a few <laughs> it's a few that have like followers and stuff like that that are actually cool that i know of personally but other ones that i know of personally really don't have nothing they really don't be with shit like they don't they just not not cool so like a lot of people talk about dating in atlanta is very hard and everything like that it wasn't hard for me girl you want to know why it was hard for me? Because I wasn't worried about it. I didn't care. I was living my life just really going through my life, having fun and like doing what I wanted to do for me, talking to who I want to talk to for me. And sometimes a lot of women, they blame like dating and stuff like that. But uh, uh, we got to open our eyes, sis. We be seeing what's wrong with these niggas before we even take it there with them. And then we still take it there with them thinking that they not going to be the nigga that they showed us what no ma'am see y'all need to learn to drop that hammer on these niggas like because that's what i do that's what i do prime example i was talking to this dude or whatever down there we was dating and um he was always like okay we just going we we just me hanging out we just hanging out da, da, da. like i'll just link you when i go to the club and you can get in you and know, homegirls like i'll just link you whatever like that so me i'm not sweating it. so if we just hanging out and i'm just linking you you just linking me then you don't need to link this kuni candy you don't need to link this country cat you don't need to you don't know no 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 it's okay no you don't need to do all that then you know what i'm saying like certain dudes will show you they test you out they going to test certain limits to see what you going to let happen. So, it, okay, if if a dude tell you, oh, I'm just going to link you and we just going to be chilling, it's really nothing like that. And you still let him come and lay with you and thinking that he's going to start treating you differently than what he just said because you had sex with him. I feel like y'all don't be believing y'all that stuff. Y'all just be saying that because it just like sound right or it don't sound right. Y'all just be saying that because y'all don't be believing that these dudes going to change from the dude that they showed you in the first place. Cause that don't happen. Like if a dude tell you, we just chilling, we could see what, how it goes. That's a man that's open to a relationship, but he not going to call it that right now. A dude that be like, nah, we just straight, strictly chilling. We strictly having sex. We doing this, da da da, like a period type dude. Then don't try to change that. It's because it's not gonna change. You're just gonna be wasting your time. Like, you know what? This video done turned into something else. I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all five ways to know that a nigga is a fuck boy. Period. So, we finna start this motherfucker bitch from the 10 up. And I'ma keep, I'ma keep the other part in there because whatever, 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 whatever. But my real bitches that watch my videos through and through, y'all gonna get the tea. The number one reason to know that a nigga is a fuck a boy. He don't want nothing from you but what to get up in you is if he don't ever ask to see you no other place rather than your house. Not even his house, your house. That that's the number one. He don't ever want to go nowhere. He wanna he wanna come and lay live with you. What? You wanna know what my I'm gonna give y'all responses too. My response be, I don't feel comfortable with you being in my house and I don't even know you. We can get to know each other outside of my residence. No response, then no response from you. He don't wanna do that, then we ain't doing nothing. Number two, 
Texting, steady texting, no phone, no phone call. Text, no phone call. Dudes talk on the phone. Don't let no nigga tell you he don't talk on the phone. That's a lie. They'll talk on the phone if they like you. They will talk on the phone if they like you. For hours, bitch. Be like, why you want to hang up if they like you? Y'all got to start. Sometimes a nigga just don't like you. It's okay. It's somebody that will. Number three. Never ask any details about you as a person. They don't ever ask anything about not not your favorite color, not are you a freak. <laughs> about you. What do you do? You know, what what do you like doing? What are your goals? You know what I'm saying? Women always act like we have to lead the conversation. No, a man is supposed to lead. You don't need to lead no man. He's going to lead himself to the water and drink. You you just leave yourself open to him being a man and leading you. But he, you don't lead no man, girl. Number four. Number four. <laughs> number four. <laughs> small lies. Small lies build to big lies. Small lies about little stuff that he didn't even have to lie about in the first place. He's going to start lying about shit that. It's big, like kids and shit like that. Like, I, I've had a nigga lie to me about having children before. I had to scroll. I scrolled all the way down to his Instagram one time. Me and my homegirl was drunk. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down. He got kids. He had children that he just stopped posting all of a sudden. Said he didn't tell me because I didn't ask. I'm telling you, these niggas crazy. And to me, the number five. It's not, it's not, it's, it shouldn't be last because it's really important. If he always trying to get you under some type of influence. Like, I can understand if you a female that smoke, you know, you drink. Because, you know, everybody, everybody do their little thing. But if he always trying to like, oh, let me smoke you out. Let me, let me, let me bring you a bottle or let's go get a bottle. Da, da, da. But then they want to take you back in home to do it when you don't even, he never even took you outside to consume no liquor or took you outside. You know what I'm saying? If he just trying to do those type of things in your home from the beginning, from jump, he don't want nothing. He don't want nothing from you. He just don't. And I mean, it might be hard to accept because I know when you like somebody, you want them to like you back. I mean, I definitely understand that. But sometimes they just won't. And it's not nothing that you can really do about it. They just don't. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're just not vibing. But that's that. And period. So I might do more little tips like that. Like fuckboy tips and stuff like that. Because I know them. I can smell them. Like I can see them from them all the way. I know. So I might do some more stuff like that. Because that just turned into something else. Because the reason I moved to Atlanta was really small. Like. I just wanted to move somewhere else. Like, I just wasn't feeling where I was living at. It wasn't, like, no big deal. Like, oh, my God. Like, Jaquia broke my heart, so I moved. No, I just moved because I was young, and I was, like, feeling like I was living like I was 50 years old, and I was 19. You know what I'm saying? Period. So, I love you guys. Talk to you later. But it won't be long.